Hey, this is Dale Shanzi and I am here to review the Parajet Maverick. I brought the flat top along as a comparison so you can kind of see the differences uh, and it'll be more obvious the differences in safety. So let's just start right off. Uh, what's the biggest injury in the sport? Well, it doesn't exist on the flat top so this has nothing to do with the real actual sport. But for people that fly stuff like this, the biggest injury is uh, getting shredded in the prop. People go right through the netting into the propeller and an easy way to check how much safety you have against uh, the netting going into the prop is just to push the two together. This one takes literally what, four ounces of pressure, if that. I mean, it's like nothing to flex the propeller into the netting. Now that's a catastrophic fail. If you don't even have basic protection from the prop, I could literally just end the review right now because there's no reason whatsoever to do further review on a unit that flunks something as basic as protection from the prop. That's huge. But I will keep going anyway in the flat top. There's no way you're pushing these two together. You would literally break the prop off before you could connect the netting. And you can see there's over six inches between the prop and the netting. There's a huge gap and the cage is incredibly strong. This one, you can flex the prop right to the cage, bam. If you trip and fall down, you're gonna flex the two together, right there. And that takes maybe seven pounds of pressure. So imagine tripping and falling down and that amount of pressure, but it's worse than that because if you trip and fall down, there's a shock loading, which is another issue. But that's the biggest issue now keep in mind, this has nothing to do with the sport. The hundreds of people that get shredded in the propellers get body parts, arms, shoulders, heads, faces shredded in props. It has zero to do with the flat top. So people flying the proper gear just do not have this issue. It doesn't exist. So don't let the sport scare you because of people getting severely injured and killed on these all the time because those things just don't happen on the flat top and that's a pretty obvious reason why. Now that's one reason. The next is if you're flying and you let go of your brake toggles in, in, in flight, where do you think the wind blows them? Those brake toggles are gonna flutter backwards in the wind, top left, top right, top left, top right. Well, on a flat top, we know about that. So we address that issue because I've seen issues like that before. So the upright tubes and the whole basic flat top premise, the prop is so far away, there is no way that that brake toggle is going through the netting or the prop on a flat top and you have two upright tubes right in the most dangerous areas. On, of course, the Parajet, boom. Um, many injuries have happened, actually injuries have happened in flight where people are just relaxing and their hands are up on the brake toggles and whap, the brake toggle goes right into the prop and their hand was ripped back into the propeller in flight. Also, if you're trying to warm it up on the ground, they freak out because they say, don't start it on the ground ever. Don't ground start, blah, blah, blah. Um, that of course doesn't apply to a flat top, but think about it. If you, they're so scared that of starting the unit on the ground, who would then put that unit on their back? Don't ever do that. That makes no sense. If somebody's so scared of the unit, they don't even dare start it. Well, you definitely don't want to wear it and go run with it when there's a high likeliness of tripping and falling down. Everybody trips and falls down. It happens. It's part of the sport. There's weight on your back. You're running. You slip onto some wet grass. You trip and fall down. This unit can literally shred you in the prop. Now, what happens when you trip and fall down? bash right onto your face. Now notice the cage is right on the ground and of course the prop will hit right above your head. So if you fall down and put your hands out to catch yourself, where do you think the prop hits? Whap! Shreds. I actually have a video on YouTube of a woman. All she does is trips and falls down. Normally you go face first on a unit like this because of the high center of gravity and the prop will literally hit the netting and cage right above your head where you put your hands and it can chop your hands off. Not to mention, where do you think your head and face are at this point? The whole unit has crushed forward, smashing your face and neck. One guy just tripped and fell down and now he's quadriplegic. All he did is trip and fall down and it face planted him so hard into the ground it snapped his neck. Um, that brings us to another issue which would be faceplant protection, but of course we're still on this one. 
Because of these floppy bars, you don't have any face plant protection. What happens if you trip and fall down? Total non-issue. You're completely protected by the unit. It has a very low center of gravity, so highly unlikely you would go face forward. But even if you were to flip it up, which takes a lot of effort, um, you're still protected because of the fixed comfort bars that keep you protected under the unit and it keeps you away from it. So huge, gigantic issue. That's why you just simply don't have those safety issues. You don't have anybody getting smashed face first put into the, into the ground with a flat top because you have face plant protection. Another big thing is these are not rounded. This is basically a, a sharp point. So if it hits the ground, it will stick into the ground, which further catapults the unit forward. Flat top bars are rounded. This is how they should be. So even if you did fall forwards, which you don't, you usually don't do in a flat top because it has a very low center of gravity. Usually you would just sit on the skids and slide to a stop perfectly on the rounded skids. But notice with this unit, it is also squared off at the bottom. There's a 90 degree angle. So if you hit the bottom, it's gonna catch on the ground. Again, whap, launching you face first into the ground because there is a sharp 90 degree point at the bottom. You have sharp points here. So everything causes you to get smashed face first into the ground when you trip and fall down. And of course, when that happens, the prop will hit the cage. Whole thing will catastrophically self-destruct on top of you. That of course is not total non-issue. It just doesn't exist if you have a flat top. Now, the uh, it's worse though. <laughs> it's worse, sadly. Big thing that they claim about these is that they go, oh, the flat top's really strong and safe, but it's a heavy tank. There's a two pound weight difference. Two pounds, two pounds between super, super flimsy units that have almost no protection, actually no protection whatsoever, versus the strongest and safest unit on the market. Two pounds. I don't know if your life is worth two pounds, but I think my life is worth two pounds. Of course, realize just the double hoop is 1.2 pounds. So the second hoop is worth 1.2 pounds. You want to eliminate that, you would eliminate an enormous amount of strength and safety. Two, this one has a motor mounting plate, which brings us to our next one. But the motor mounting plate is one pound. So there's 2.2 pounds on the flat top, just adding safety features that simply don't exist on this unit. But let's get to a motor mounting plate. With this unit, the engine is mounted to the frame on rubber mounts that are only six inches apart. So you can see the rubber mounts, boom. Now, that's horribly bad because if you have six inch apart rubber mounts, when it flexes, the prop changes pitch, makes a big difference. So watch what happens if I press down on the engine. Let's just say that you do a butt landing and you smack your butt into the ground. Well, look at the tip of the prop. So any butt landing and the rubber of the motor mounts flex, which allows the prop to flex right into the ground. And of course, imagine when it's sideways. So it's worse because if I just lay it down, you don't get the effect of the engine flexing, which will happen with an impact. So if you fall forwards, you gotta keep in mind, it's much worse than what I show you just standing like this because you don't have the flex of the motor. So add that it takes only a few ounces of pressure to flex these two together. And then you have to add in the factor of an impact because an impact, the rubber mounts will flex and the prop will swing all the way forward, clear forward. I mean, it'll literally go through the whole thing and the whole thing self-destructs. Just to give you an idea on the flat top, so with the flat top, I can jump up and down on the engine and the prop is not gonna hit anything. I am literally jumping up and down my entire body weight and that is not going anywhere. <laughs> That's my entire body weight jumping up and down in the engine versus just adding a little bit of weight. And that is the tip of the prop literally hitting the ground. So if you fall down or any impact or smack or jar, the whole thing flex, the prop comes way forward into the cage frame and takes out the whole unit. Um, catastrophic issue. Uh, the flat top has a much more solid mounting system because of that one extra pound 
of having a mounting plate, now not only do you have a much more stable base, but you can also use any engine. This frame is made only for that specific engine, so you can't mount any other engine. This comes with plate systems so that if there's a different engine or you want a 250, it'll bolt right on, or you want a Vitarazzi, you can bolt it right on, you want an Atomatum, you want a 120, any engine, you can just bolt right to the flat top frame because there's a plate system and it adds a lot of strength and safety. Also, keep in mind, without the plate, the vibration of the engine is ripping the frame apart. So all the vibration of all the life of the motor is ripping the frame apart, where on a flat top, all that energy and vibration is ripping the motor mounting plate. It's going into the actual solid aluminum plate. So you're not gonna have your frame crack over time and you're just not having that issues because it is mounted properly and extremely incredibly strongly. Uh, it takes out all those issues. They just don't have those safety features and factors on units like Parajet or almost most of them on the market simply don't have those features. So you'll get frame cracking and notice how small the frame is. You've got a lot of vibration, any out of balance to the prop and it's gonna put a lot of vibration into the frame directly, which also then goes into the pilot where here you have two different mounting systems, uh, which you get better vibration dampening. And of course it doesn't try and damage your frame. And you can see it'll support my entire body weight jumping up and down on the engine. Huge, gigantic difference. Okay, so let's say you're gonna gas up your, your paramotor and go flying. With the flat top, the gas cap is facing the rear. It is right there. Boop. You can use a normal gas can. You can even tilt the unit forward and gas straight down if you want. Um, no problem, piece of cake. Also, as we all do, because we all have our stupid moments, what happens if you overfill the flat top gas can? The gas just falls harmlessly to the ground. Okay, let's look at the Parajet. How the heck do you gas this up? Your gas cap is literally under your frame behind your harness. So somehow you got to get gas all the way back to this tiny little cap back here. And what happens if you overflow? Well, it's all going to go right down the harness and you're going to dump gas all over yourself. Then of course, there's more than that because the flat top has a one-way valve. So if you tip over and fall down, the gas cannot come out of a flat top. It's got a sealed one-way valve. It'll allow air in to replace the fuel that's being uh, burned by the engine but it will not allow fuel out if you tip over. These units will have a breather hose, so if you do fall down, it's immediately gonna start dumping gas all over the back of your neck and over your head um, because that's what a breather hose does. It's a literally a hose that goes to the gas tank, and so you dump gas all over yourself, which is very difficult to put back in, so don't dump too much because trying to refill it is a royal pain in the butt. Okay, while we're down here, I guess we can talk about crumple zone. This is the next huge injury um, that is gigantic as people impacting the ground. Well, with the Parajet, notice the harness is literally touching the ground. So basically the first thing that's gonna impact the ground is your spine. Your butt's gonna hit the ground, boom. You basically have zero crumple zone. You hit the ground, you're the crumple zone for the Parajet. So when you smash into the ground, boom, it's your body taking the brunt of that entire impact. On a flat top, if you look from the side, you literally have 16, 18 inches of crumple zone before your butt hits the ground. That is huge, 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 huge. Think about a dirt bike. It only has about, what, five inches of up travel? And they can go over 20 foot jumps with that thing. Imagine a dirt bike with 18 inches of up travel. You could jump it off a house roof and laugh about it. Uh, that's like off-road, actually not even off-road race trucks generally have that much up travel and they can go over huge jumps and take enormous impacts. Crumple zone works. It's mandated in your car. They got it in helicopters, planes. It's just a no brainer. This, you have no impact protection. Now, a lot of times they'll say, oh, we don't fly, we don't fly to crash. We don't buy a unit to crash it. Everybody's gonna smack into the ground. You're flying around, you might get hit with a little thermal, it'll pop you up, you have a hard landing, you're landing on your spine. Another guy literally just broke his back literally just a week ago in the UK on a unit like this, no crumple zone. He hit, now he's in a wheelchair. Another one before that, another one before that. So many times it's ridiculous, 
people break their backs because it really doesn't take much of an impact to your spine. The flat top makes a huge world of difference. Huge, gigantic world of difference. Here, numerous deaths. Three more people have died in the last week and a half. Three more dead um, on units like this. And big part of that is when you impact the ground, your spine hits first and it really doesn't take much of an impact to break your back or kill you. Now let's go into stability in flight. These comfort bars are only about 16 inches apart. That's it, that's pretty standard. They're that far apart. Flat top is 22 inch fixed hook in points. My whole arm fits between this and it's still not there. It's longer than my whole arm huge difference in width. What that does is it adds an incredible amount of stability. Think about getting in turbulence and you're trying to twist up in the risers. Well, the wide fixed hook end points drastically work to prevent you from twisting up in the risers. Actually, one of the three people who died in Arizona had riser twists. Actually, I think the other uh, two of the three had riser. Nope, all three. All three had twisted in their risers. That's part of the problem. They took a collapse and when the glider turned, they weren't flying safe gliders, which is part of the problem. Um, but when that glider flips around, these units that have the super narrow bars, they have very little to prevent you from twisting up in the risers. The flat top is incredibly sturdy. Not to mention we usually fly in with dominators, which don't do backflip 180s out of the sky. Um, so that makes a huge difference in helping to prevent riser twists. That's gigantic. Now, but wait, there's more. It gets worse. Let's look at these comfort bars. So let's say you smash in on the side, boom, like this, and you hit sideways. Think about where your side is. You now have this sharp point and this narrow bar. You have a slab of metal that rams into your ribs. Think about that. So when you hit the ground to the side, that bar is smashed and the only thing, all of that loading pressure goes straight to your rib. People break ribs, puncture their lungs. The flat top goes all the way from top to bottom. It goes all the way from your hip all the way up to your armpit. It loads the entire side of your body. So not only does the crumple zone work, but it loads your whole body just like the seats in your car. If you get in an impact in the seats in the car, that whole seat is loading you from the hip all the way up to your armpit. So you either have basically a half inch wide pressure point of all the impact into your ribs, very deadly, or you have all the way from armpit clear down to your hips. Huge, gigantic difference in safety again. But there's so much more to the comfort bars, not just face plant protection, not just holding you inside of your crumple zone, forcing the crumple zone to work, and the stability in flight. But there's many things really to get the full amount out of it. You'd have to watch the, the video of the 304 reasons competent pilots only fly flat tops because these are only a few. We don't have time to do a seven hour video of the 304 reasons you just would not fly a unit like this. This is the only unit that you would choose. But these are just a few basic points that we're hitting um, that are pretty big. Next, um, this is kind of a major pain in the butt the pull starter above you. Notice it goes right through the netting. Goes through the netting. Actually, this one's kind of a pain in the butt because when you go to pull the rope, notice the rope starts tying up into your pulley. So your netting wants to bind up into your pulley. I had to actually pull the netting out of there a second ago. But another issue with this is anytime you go to disassemble the unit for transport, you literally have to take this off and undo the whole system and then tie that off. With the flat top, it's connected to the frame and your push arms are much stronger than your triceps. So it is mounted to the frame. So when you take off all these cage pieces, free and clear, no if, ands or buts, no frustration, no having to disassemble and take your pole start off and everything like that. Next, you have a lot more muscle pushing this way than you do with your triceps pulling this way. So you have a lot more physical ability to actually pull start the unit by pushing 
as opposed to pulling over your head. So lots of issues just with the way that they mount that. Um, it could be changed, but that's the way they send them from the factory, which is kind of a pain. This one, another issue is you have uh, metal to metal and you've got steel against aluminum, which is kind of a no-no. Um, also to try and change your hook in point, you would have to unbolt these, but what if the bolts come out? With a flat top, you don't have that issue. The strap goes around the comfort bar, so there is no metal to metal. You don't have aluminum to aluminum or steel to aluminum, which is bad because you can have issues with that. But there's no metal to metal. You get a strap straight to the aluminum. It's very easy to adjust. You just unhook the strap and loop it around and put it in the next one. It's a piece of cake, no tools required. This one requires tools, and you better make sure that that doesn't untwist also, it's right next to your ribs, so if you smash, that's going in your ribs as well. Um, but another big issue is the floppy bars going up and down. These will flop around in turbulence. There's no reason to have the bars flop up and down, and they have no lateral support. So if you're trying to do acrobatics, just look at these bars and how flimsy this frame is. I mean, look at, look at these bars flexing back and forth. There's no lateral support. The whole frame is flexing on this unit. So you would definitely not want to do acrobatics or get into turbulence on this unit. It just doesn't have the strength. And on many designs like this, these are just the fake Sky Cruiser clones. Uh, there's many different ones. Sky Cruiser, uh, Black Hawk copied Sky Cruiser, the Scout's a copy. The There's a zillion different versions of this old Sky Cruiser design. And some have had these swing arms break clean off. There's just one connection point. On the flat top, you are not flexing these bars because you have lateral support. It is crossed in and triangled off. You have incredible amount of strength. So these are built to be able to take hard acro and you are not bending these bars. So these are designed for acro and have incredible strength and stability because you're not flopping around. Also, in order to resist torque steer, you want to be able to weight shift. Well, how do you weight shift? In order to weight shift, you need to be able to shift your weight to the side. To have more weight shift, you simply need wider hook in points so you can shift your weight farther. That's how you shift your weight. It's like a hang glider. You've gotta be able to move back and forth inside your control surface. With this unit over here, your bars are so narrow, your body will barely fit in between this. And if you're a heavier guy, you literally won't fit between these bars. You'll be constantly being have pressure on your sides. So especially if you're a much bigger guy, but even if you're like 220, trying to fit inside of this, if you have any width in your body, or say you're a bodybuilder, you are not fitting uh, inside of this. And you have a sharp point that's gonna be pushing against your body. Uh, where the flat top, you have a 22 inch wide surface. Even if you're 400 pounds, you can fit inside of a flat top. Um, it's a total piece of cake. But these floppy bars do not help you in weight shift. The way you get weight shift is to widen your hook in points. It's just like free flying harnesses. If you want more weight shift, you have wider hook in points. Less weight shift, less hook in points. So, or less width to the hook in points. But these bars are so flimsy, if you trip and fall down or you pull any G-forces, I would be very concerned. Where these are load tested to 3,200 pounds per side. <laughs> that's, yeah, 6,400 pounds. And that wasn't the failure, that's what we load tested them to. So it's absolutely incredibly insanely strong on the flat top. It's designed for acro pilots. And remember, all of that strength and there's only a two pound weight difference. So you have all of the upgraded safety features and only a two pound weight difference, which just the engine mounting plate is a pound. Keep that in mind. So there are a lot of differences. I could easily go on with hundreds and hundreds of differences, but really almost all of these mean the unit is a flunk you absolutely should not fly this. No competent instructor is gonna put you on a unit where the slightest mistake and you shred your hands in the prop. Do you wanna look like this? Then you don't buy units like the Parajet or a Scout or Fly Products or Nirvana or Gravity Paramotors, any of those. If you don't wanna look like this, you don't fly that. 
flat top paramotor. I literally have never been injured in way, 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 way over 11,000 flights. And I'm the guy pushing all the limits and setting countless world records. So that's pretty much, you know, we could go on and on because there's literally 304 reasons competent pilots only fly flat tops. Just watch my video series on that. But that should give you enough information to see clearly any of the Sky Cruiser clones are an absolute flunk. Do not fly this. Even if somebody gives it to you for free, don't fly it. I'm not gonna flight test it because I'm not an idiot. I'm not gonna fly stuff like that. Now, you might be able to get away with it hundreds of times in a row. It only takes once. Use so much slip on some wet grass, boom. It's crap happens. You have to prepare and have the unit designed to fix all of those well-known issues. The flat top does that. This one unit completely flunks on safety. How does it fly? Who cares? It doesn't matter. You shouldn't fly it because there's absolutely zero reason or excuse for the catastrophic, horrific flunks in safety. That's the bottom line. Friends don't let friends fly stuff like that. Friends only encourage friends to fly flat tops. Until there's another unit that has the safety of the flat top, there isn't anything else. I wish I had three or four units and I should say, okay, any of these four would be good. But at this point right now, the flat top is literally the only unit any competent pilot can buy. Let's go flying, but do it right on the right gear.